fire in downtown Des Moines at 11th and Grand. It was a dangerous blaze that forced apartment dwellers out into the street, and the fire caused extensive damage to the fine arts building. These stories, plus weather and sports, so we hope you'll join us at 6. Anti-abortion activists demonstrate in Washington and in other cities. The government cracks down on products that contain asbestos. And there's growing campaign violence in the Philippines. NBC Nightly News with Tom Brokaw. Good evening, I'm Roger Mudd in Washington. Tom Brokaw is on assignment. President Reagan today used the 13th anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision legalizing abortion to tell the opponents of the decision that he was proud to stand with them in the long march for the right to life. All over the nation, the court decision was argued out again in church services, demonstrations, vigils, rallies, and marches. But it was here in Washington where the anti-abortionists, encouraged by the president himself, put on their biggest show. Here's Carl Stern. Although there were 36,000 marchers, according to the National Park Service, that was half as many as last year, a sign that interest may be waning. Ten demonstrators were arrested for breaching a police barricade at the Supreme Court. Again this year, the marchers' send-off came by loudspeaker from inside the White House, where the president met with anti-abortion leaders but declined to permit pictures. Each child about to be born is a unique, unrepeatable gift. Each child who escapes the tragedy of abortion is an immeasurable victory. The day started with some confrontations outside a Washington-area abortion clinic. Don't go in there! Last night, supporters of the right to abortion gathered in a Washington alley to emphasize their concern about returning to the day of back alley abortions. We must keep abortion and birth control safe and legal. Two abortion cases are before the Supreme Court right now. The administration has urged the court to overturn its 1973 decision. But it would take at least two or three new justices to change the court's direction. And the move for a constitutional amendment seems to have stalled on Capitol Hill. I would expect this to be a year of the status quo rather than any great progress. But others were more optimistic. Our influence on the political process is growing. Uh, we are not at all frustrated. Right to Lifers distributed roses, a symbol of life, to the court and Congress, some for the chambers of Justice Blackman, who wrote the 1973 decision. In the past, he also got a bullet through a window, and he now has a security escort. But he says the decision is one the court had to make. Of course it was agonizing. Uh, we were fully aware that uh, this is an emotional issue, but um, every now and then the court finds itself confronted with an issue of that kind. We cannot cast it aside. We have to decide it and uh, go on to the next case. Some of those inside the Supreme Court building watched from the windows, then went back to work. Carl Stern, NBC News, at the Supreme Court. Two anti-abortion leaders who met with the president today quoted Mr. Reagan as saying he would consider pardoning abortion clinic bombers on a case-by-case -case basis. Later, the White House said the president said he might review one of the cases. Also surfacing on this 13th anniversary of the decision known as Roe versus Wade, comes the news from Providence that the Catholic Church has excommunicated Marianne Sorrentino, the executive director of the Planned Parenthood for Rhode Island. Here's Lisa Myers in Providence. Surrounded by supporting Protestant ministers, Marianne Sorrentino declared that the Roman Catholic Church's decision to make a public example of her had backfired. My phone at the office and at home has not stopped ringing from Catholics and others who want to say we're on your side. This is the greatest day for reproductive freedom and we have the Catholic Diocese to thank for that. The Diocese of Rhode Island says Sorrentino brought it all on herself by violating church law. Uh, and she excommunicated herself by participating in a, uh, an operation such as the Planned Parenthood organization where abortions take place. In the Catholic Church, excommunication is the equivalent of censure. A person may still attend Mass but may not receive communion or other sacraments. The excommunication was disclosed yesterday on a TV show by Father John Randall, an anti-abortion leader. Randall said Sorrentino needs many prayers. She's like the public enemy number one of babies being killed in the womb in Rhode Island. The decision was popular among anti-abortion protesters in Rhode Island. I hope that that other people who are involved in the pro-choice to kill mentality will definitely 
face the same consequences that she did. Bishop Angel says that any woman who has an abortion faces the same consequences. Uh, the law of the church is very clear that a person who has an abortion, a successful abortion, incurs automatic excommunication. Sorrentino says she will continue to go to church. I am a Catholic and I will always be a Catholic and whether they give me communion or bury me in their church isn't going to change that. Her excommunication has been upheld by the Pope's representative in Washington. Lisa Myers, NBC News, Providence, Rhode Island. The federal government said today the economy in 1985 expanded even more slowly than it had thought. The gross national product increased by a meager 2.3%. However, the government also announced today that prices rose last year by only 3.8%, and that's the fourth straight year the inflation rate has been at or below 4%. Still to come on our broadcast tonight, Robert Bazell reports on the planet uh, Uranus, almost two billion miles away, with the spaceship Voyager coming in for some close-up pictures. And Bill Schechner reports on kids growing up scared on city streets dominated by gangs. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. And when many adults get a cough, they play doctor at home. They treat their cough with the same medicine they originally bought for their children. They need one of the adult formulas from Vicks for the coughs adults get with the strength adults need. Formula 44 for coughs, 44D for coughs with congestion, and Formula 44M for coughs with congestion and a raw, irritated throat. The adult formulas. You can't buy anything more effective. The adult formulas from Vicks, of course. <laughs> all-wheel drive 4000 CS Quattro from the swift completion of its appointed rounds. Audi, the art of engineering. Isn't there one laxative here that's natural and works overnight? Only one. Gentle Nature. A natural vegetable tablet that works overnight. Gentle Natural New Gentle Nature from Exlax. Natural and overnight. For gas pain and bloated feeling, Gas X has the fastest relief ingredient. Look. Gas bubbles in beer. Add the leading ad acid. Add Gas X. Gas X got rid of the gas. Gas X has the fastest reliever for your gas pain and bloated feeling. For more than two years, the Reagan administration has been under pressure to do something about asbestos, which is known to cause cancer. NBC's Robert Hager has learned that tomorrow, the Environmental Protection Agency will announce a proposal to ban all asbestos products. After years of recognizing that asbestos is a hazard, can cause cancer and debilitating lung disease, the EPA will propose tomorrow a 10-year phase-out of the manufacture of all asbestos products and an immediate ban on some of them. It's an $843 million a year business. Proposed for an immediate ban, the manufacture of all asphalt and vinyl asbestos floor tiles sold in the U.S. now for kitchens and offices. All water pipe made with asbestos cement, as much of it is in the southwest. All asbestos felt lining used under floors and roofs in commercial construction. And all specialty asbestos clothing used by some firefighters and others working around high temperatures. Proposed for phase-out over a 10-year period are asbestos brake linings. At the moment, there's no proven substitute available, so the brake industry is on notice to press forward with research. Also to be phased out, roof and driveway sealants with asbestos, asbestos cement, and paper engine gaskets which contain asbestos. A spokesman for the industry, Robert Pig, took issue. The action is wholly unjustified due to the current uses of asbestos and the minimal risk, if any. But environmental groups were pleased. Robert Percival. I think it's a long overdue step in the right direction. EPA planned to announce a similar ban more than a year ago, but was blocked by a skeptical Office of Management and Budget. Tomorrow's proposal is still subject to comment by industry and others, and would normally become a final order within two months. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington. Severe turbulence in the skies over Utah today caused an airliner to shake so violently that screaming passengers were hurled up against its walls and ceiling. But the plane landed safely in San Francisco. It was United Airlines Flight 127 out of Chicago, 144 people aboard. Twelve passengers were injured. As they were removed from the plane, others said that for a few seconds, it seemed as though the plane 
was being shaken to pieces. How was the flight? Never been so glad to get on the ground in my life. I was sitting in the last seat, and a man flip flopped in front of me, and he went down, and his head hit the floor, and he went up and hit the ceiling. I always had my seat belt on, and nothing happened. Thank the Lord. Insurance underwriters in London said today that one billion dollars was paid last year in claims stemming from airline disasters. And 1985 was the worst year ever for commercial aviation. More than 1,500 passengers on major airlines were killed. Tums doesn't have it. Rolaids doesn't have it. Maalox Plus does. We have what you need for complete relief of excess acid, heartburn, and gas. You need Maalox, America's number one antacid for excess acid and heartburn, plus the number one reliever of painful gas pressure. Now both come in handy roll packs of Maalox Plus tablets and fast-acting liquid. Compared to these others, only Maalox Plus has all that, plus a great Swiss cream flavor. Get complete relief. Try Maalox Plus. City feet, country feet. Fleet feet. Neat feet. No matter how you treat your feet, Dr. Scholl's makes you feel like dancing with double comfort air pillow insoles, hidden comfort half insoles for high heel shoes, workday insoles for hard working feet, center Christ step insoles. Tired feet, active feet. Dr. Scholl's has all kinds of comfort for all kinds of feet, right here. Dr. Scholl's makes you feel like dancing. His name's Lightning. When you want a loan, most banks work at a slow trot. But someone can put you in the saddle. Hop on! The boss at Beneficial. Hi, I'm Carol. Our manager can get you a Beneficial credit line account, usually in 24 hours. The money you want for the things you want. And that was fast. Fast as lightning. You bet. Beneficial. Talk to the manager and you're talking to the boss. Police in South Africa said today they had shot to death seven blacks and 40 others yesterday during an intense search for the killers of two white policemen. The search went on today in a black township west of Johannesburg. There was a massive show of force with hundreds of troops searching house to house. 250 blacks were rounded up for questioning. 11 were charged with the murders. The white policemen, the first to be killed in 17 months of racial unrest, were attacked by a mob outside the township. Violence emerged once more today as an issue in the Philippine election campaign. Opposition presidential candidate Corazon Aquino abandoned the last part of her campaign swing. She said she had seen a poster threatening her with death, but said she would answer bullets with ballots. NBC's Steve Mallory reports on the violence that has marked this campaign. The toll is eight now. Eight campaigners for the opposition candidate Corazon Aquino murdered in the past two weeks. Political violence is an ugly tradition here. Two of the victims died in this car when a man in military fatigues opened fire. Two others escaped. They're afraid to show their faces. They know the killer. He knows them. Do you think they will try to kill you? That's one thing for sure, sir. A government spokesman contends the two would be safe going to the general appointed to ensure election security. You know, when he has gone over and investigated these situations, he will probably be able to do whatever remedial measures are necessary. The Aquino camp doesn't buy that. A spokesman says President Marcos has more in mind. If he wants to kill all of us, that's his problem. But uh, we are afraid that before the exercise is over, what we are saying is just only the beginning. Adoring crowds make protecting Mrs. Aquino a nightmare, especially when her bodyguards, by law, are prohibited from carrying weapons and not permitted to carry walkie-talkies to coordinate security. She was offered government troops for protection. That offer was declined. Aquino ever mindful that her husband was assassinated while being protected by soldiers. Steve Mallory, NBC News, Manila. In India today, three men were convicted and sentenced to death by hanging for the assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. All are members of the minority Sikh religion. One was a security guard posted at the Prime Minister's home. He was found guilty of murder. The other two were convicted of plotting to kill Mrs. Gandhi. 
In South Yemen uh, today, radical Marxist rebels tightened their grip on the capital and the country's pro-Soviet president was reported holed up in a remote stronghold. That civil war there has reached such intensity that there are reports of fighters building barricades out of corpses. In tonight's commentary, John Chancellor considers that war as seen from the Kremlin. Consider the reports that have been piling up on Mikhail Gorbachev's desk in the Kremlin. The only self-declared Marxist state in the Arab world in the midst of full-scale civil war. The Soviet embassy under fire. Thousands of Russians, East Germans and Cubans evacuated from a beach. The situation is a real mess. That's what's going on in South Yemen. Moscow's only ally on the Arabian Peninsula, one of only three countries in the whole Arab world with close ties to the Soviet Union. South Yemen isn't much to look at, mainly sand and rocks, but it's a terrific location for the Soviet Navy and for Russian eavesdroppers. Now, all the old tribal rivalries in South Yemen have erupted in heavy fighting. The simplest explanation seems to be that the Russians lost control of the various factions and that things just blew up, as they do in that part of the world. Mr. Gorbachev must be thinking, why did this happen to me and why did it happen now? He's been in his job for just 10 months and he's got a big party congress coming up early this year. There have been indications that his leadership is not as secure as it first appeared. And now there's the mess in South Yemen. It happened on Gorbachev's watch and the trouble may have been caused by policies he himself set in motion or at least approved. Whatever happens, South Yemen is likely to remain a client Soviet state. But its civil war is a blow to Gorbachev, the kind of trouble he doesn't need right now. He's done well in a lot of places with his neat tailoring and his handsome wife, but those are assets of little use in Moscow's corridors of power. Which is commentary for this evening. In Boston, the Soviet dissident Yelena Bonner was reported in good condition today after going back into the hospital last night. She was suffering from chest pains and a moderately elevated temperature following recent bypass surgery. The diagnosis was an irritation around the heart. Doctor said it was being treated with drugs and should subside. When Time Magazine reported that former Israeli Defense Minister Ariel Sharon knew about plans for the Beirut massacre of Palestinian refugees in advance, Sharon sued for libel. The suit was filed in both Israel and the United States. In a New York courtroom last year, Sharon lost. But in Tel Aviv today, he won a quiet victory. The magazine apologized to him and agreed to pay part of his legal costs. <laughs> Constipation is disaster, and that is, that's the honest truth. Jean Wright talks about constipation and Dulcolax laxatives. I can depend on Dulcolax because it takes care of my constipation problems in a, a gentle, easy way. My doctor suggested that I try Dulcolax. And I did, and I was very happy. Dulcolax suppositories can work in 15 minutes to one hour. Dulcolax tablets predictably overnight. I wake up in the morning, and I get complete relief. Dulcolax brightens my day. A little confusion can be fun, but not when you're looking at long-distance phone companies. Because all companies aren't the same, you have to watch out for the unexpected. No operator service and no service for many small towns. Different levels of transmission quality and no immediate credit for wrong numbers. Only one company comes with no surprises. AT&T. The more you hear, the better we sound. AT&T. The right choice. When someone you know is a little under the weather, send them the new perfect prescription from FTD. Hey, chicken, how you feeling? Ooh, that bad, huh? Look, I brought you something to make you feel better. It's the new FTD Perfect Prescription Bouquet. It's filled with colorful flowers in its own tote bag. And you know, the nicest thing about the Perfect Prescription Bouquet is that it comes in this reusable chicken soup bowl. Oops. Send the new Perfect Prescription Bouquet only from your FTD florist. Voyager 2, the spacecraft that sent us spectacular pictures of Jupiter and Saturn a few years ago, is now closing in on the planet Uranus this week. As NBC's Robert Bazell reports, it's a planet that until now has been a mystery to us. These are the latest photographs of Uranus. We know little about this planet, the seventh farthest from the sun. We are about to learn a great deal. The Voyager 2 spacecraft is closing in on Uranus. On Friday morning, Voyager will make its closest approach flying just over 50,000 miles from the surface of the planet. Uranus is 1.8 billion miles from Earth. That's so far that signals from Voyager traveling at the speed of light 
take two hours, 44 minutes, and 50 seconds to arrive here at Mission Control at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Three, two, one. The Voyagers 1 and 2 were launched a few weeks apart in 1977, beginning one of the most ambitious and successful journeys of exploration undertaken by man. In 1979, they flew by Jupiter, by Saturn in 1981. Voyager 1 then headed into space beyond the solar system, but engineers were able to direct Voyager 2 toward Uranus. The pictures sent back from Jupiter were outstanding showing that planet's huge, mysterious red spot. From Saturn, we received a detailed look at that planet's rings. Scientists expect nothing less spectacular from their view of Uranus. Oh, I think this is really a very exciting encounter because we know so much less about Uranus than we knew about either Jupiter or Saturn, and we certainly had many discoveries and surprises at those two planets. As it gets closer to Uranus, Voyager will take a look at that planet's moons, including Ariel, Titania, and Miranda. Voyager has already discovered seven moons astronomers had never seen. Next, it will examine the planet's rings. When it looks at Uranus itself, there may be a lot of surprises. The planet spins in an irregular orbit. Scientists think it was hit by a huge asteroid sometime in the past. Because of that, it is difficult to see much of Uranus from Earth. After leaving Uranus, Voyager 2 will head toward Neptune, which we'll encounter in 1989. Then it will join Voyager 1, and travel into the infinity of outer space. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Pasadena, California. Some scientists have been looking into why obese parents tend to have obese children. Experts have long believed that the reason is poor eating habits learned at the family dining table. But now, researchers at the University of Pennsylvania say that's not true. They say that whether people grow up to be fat or skinny depends in large part on their genes. <laughs> Buick announces low 7.9% financing. Now's the time. You're moving up and growing. Buick's here to take you where you're going. 7.9% financing now on Buick Century with 2.5 liter engine, Skylark, Somerset, and Regal. Wouldn't you? Moving up the style, yeah. Wouldn't you? You thrown it all the while, yeah. There may be other cars with reduced financing, but they're not Buick's. Wouldn't you really rather have a Buick? Troubled by bad breath, hiding your face in shame, oh. because nothing seems to work? Oh. Then naturally you need a Milkbone Dog Biscuit. Every delicious crunch of Milkbone helps scrape away plaque and food particles that can lead to bad breath. In fact, no other leading dog biscuit gets your teeth naturally cleaner and whiter or your breath fresher. Get Milkbone Dog Biscuits because naturally every dog wants fresher breath. World terrorism. What has it done to Americans living and traveling in Europe? Has it made vacations too dangerous? Roger Mudd reports from Rome, Monday on American Almanac. Do you think effective antacid medicine can taste good? Sure, when it's Remigel. Tastes better than any antacid I've ever tried. What a job it does on my heartburn. Hey, no chalky taste and liquid relief in every Remigel tablet. I never thought an antacid could taste this good and work. New great tasting Remigel, soft and chewy with the same effective relief for acid indigestion and heartburn as two teaspoons of the leading liquid. Relief never tasted so good. New Remigel, liquid relief in every great tasting tablet. As if the youngsters growing up in the older and poorer parts of America's cities didn't have enough problems, many of them have to grow up scared. They are in fear for their lives, literally, because of gang violence. Bill Schechner, who reports on the young for the NBC News program Main Street, has a report tonight from the Urban Battleground. Chicago's West Town area. Tough, poor, dominated by gangs, and dangerous especially for the innocent. Rafael Maldonado, who's been shot at and beaten. You don't even know when they're going to attack you until it happens. You don't know when it's going to happen. So you got to be on your guard at all the time. LaShawn Smith, who's seen a six-year-old child die. I sent a little friend of mine that was visiting with her relatives around to the corner store. I gave her some money, sent her around to the corner store. While she was around the corner, the gangbangers started shooting back and forth across the street. She got caught in the middle and was killed. It is the kind of thing that happens here, where gangs stake out turf, make clothing and colors into a uniform. Non-members have to abide by the rules, 
live like civilians in a war zone, even though it is the neighborhood of their birth. Evelyn Vasquez, whose friends have been beaten. You have to watch out where you're going. You have to watch out how you stand, how you put your hands, what colors you wear, you know, what you say. You have to always be on the guard all the time. In Chicago last year, there were 58 gang-related deaths, kids hurting kids. Chicago is not alone. Similar violence is a fact of inner city life in many places. Chicago is just better organized. It has 110 youth gangs. Diana Aguirre, whose friends have been hurt. You know, I wake up and I say, help me God in this day because I don't know what's gonna happen to me. If it's something happens to me and I cannot handle it. The area high school, Roberto Clemente, has 3,200 students. Half of them drop out, but half do not, overcoming what professionals call depression, anxiety, and deprivation. These forgotten heroes call it life, just the extra price they pay for living where they do. George Ortiz, who's been beaten. I feel like I've been cursed. <laughs> you know, it's like, why, you know, did I end up living here? You feel cheated. Cheated of what? Cheated of all the happiness that people who live in nice, decent neighborhoods have. Johnny is the leader of one section of a youth gang. He joined after another gang killed his brother. He recognizes that his gang hurts innocent teenagers. I don't feel that happy about it. Feel guilty? Mm-hmm. You do? Yes. Then why are you still in a gang? I don't know. What do you think? <sighs> Living in the ghetto, as you know, without being in a gang, I tell the truth, it ain't nothing. Chicago employs street workers who try to prevent fights and get teenagers to leave gangs, but the program is hampered by lack of money and staff. Still, the teenagers caught in the crossfire haven't given up. I want to study and I want to do something with my life so that I can be someone and, and I'll be able to leave. It's either them or you. It's sort of like survival, you know? Survival of the fittest, you know? You do what you do to stay alive. And the faster you can move on, I guess the happier everybody will be. The inner city warfare isn't likely to end soon, but neither is the struggle to rise above it. Bill Schechner, NBC News, Chicago. That's the news for Wednesday night. I'm Roger Mudd in Washington. Good night. Tonight, a real-life detective story, and you could help solve it. See the all-new Missing Special. Then Black's Magic sales for sunken treasure, thanks to Dad. What am I going to do with you? And now he says ghosts have stolen the wreck. Would I lie to you? And on St. Elsewhere, has Jack slipped up for the last time? Sweet dreams. Tonight. Tonight from New Center 13. Charter Community Hospital may have a new home. Firefighters are still searching for the cause of that devastating fire in downtown Des Moines. And eight inmates are charged in the Fort Madison prison uprising. Mike with the forecast and Jeff with sports coming up next. We're the one, we're the super value store, we're the one. This week at your neighborhood super value, buy Pampers disposable diapers. Small, medium, super, or large super. Only $7.99 a box. Gino's frozen pizza, all varieties, just 69 cents for a 10-ounce box. From the meat department by Tyson Grade A Whole Fryers. Just 47 cents a pound. Now through Tuesday at Super Value. We're the one super value. 
Dishwashing can make hands feel awful. One reason might be your dishwashing liquid. Some have more harsh ingredients than others. Hands can feel red, rough, cracked. Do dishes the ivory way. The simple truth about ivory liquid is hand-loving suds. Famous for cleaning dishes without all those harsh ingredients. Your hands can feel soft and smooth because ivory liquid is easier on them than the other leading brands. Ivory suds have the difference you can feel. Help find the missing children. Stay tuned for the Missing Children Network, made possible by your local 7-Up Bottler, next on News Center 13.